So today we're going to learn how to implement a login system like this, that you press login, you put some data like your email, your password. You can see here in the network that when I press login, it will do a request, it will get the token, and now it recognizes that I'm logged in. So it allows me to log out and it says my email here or my information that I just put in the when I was logging in and I can just log out as well. Let's start by explaining what authentication is. Authentication is needed because you have two endpoints or let's say two systems talking to each other. It can be a user and a system, but generally it's system to system. Let's say that you have a laptop that it's basically a client, right? It can be any client can be a mobile phone as well. And you have a server or an API. This is the classic model for authentication today. You have an API. That would be a backend. And when a request comes in, because we're using HTTP, so in HTTP you do a request from the front end and then the request gets answered or responded by the backend. So it's always request response and is stateless. Stateless. What that means is that every time that a new request is made, everything has to be negotiated again. Like the entire, like this backend will have no idea if this laptop does two requests, like one first to get the users and then tomorrow you want to get, or the next second, you want to get the movies. Let's say you're doing Netflix.com. So you need a users and movies, right? So, or you need movies and favorites. So the first request that it's going to get the movies, the backend responds. And the next time, the next time when the, when the laptop or, or the Netflix client requests again for the favorites, the backend will need all the information entirely again. It cannot like remember about who was doing the requests in the first place. So every time that you do a request, you have to tell who you are, who you are. And how do you, how do you say that? Usually we append a token to every request. So, Let's say that you're requesting about movies, right? So your request, it's going to be a get request slash movies. So you're doing a request to slash movies. Since the backend doesn't know who you are, it will reject that request with the classic 401. There are two states for rejecting in, in terms of security. You have 401 and 403. You can Google both. Here's going to be the information. So the first one would be, oh, are you going to tell me? 403, it's, 401 is unauthorized. So that means that I didn't even send authentication. And forbidden, no, the opposite, my bad. Forbidden is, this request is forbidden. So you cannot ac access it. And unauthorized is that, your access information, it's wrong. So if I don't pass any token, let's say that I don't pass a token and I don't do this, then when I do a request, it's going to return a 401 because it's unauthorized. But if I pass a token, depending on this token, if it's good, bad, if it gives me access to that or not, it's going to return either a 403 or 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 200 like if it's if it's all good it may return a 200 right so again 403 would be 200 obviously it's okay 403 means uh forbidden so i know who you are but you cannot access and for one is who are you right who are you you're not even authorized i don't know who you are those are the response codes that you get in every response. So I'm gonna put them in blue here. Okay, now about the request. So if I append a token, then it will know who am, who am I. 
every time you have to append that token. And where do you put it? Like when you're doing a fetch request in 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 the front end or with either if you're using Axios or if you're using fetch, you know that when you're doing it, you say fetch and then you put in parentheses the URL that you're fetching. So slash movies actually it will be the host and then slash movies like my website dot com slash movies or my api my api dot com slash movies and then after that you know that you put the options right comma options so those options i'm going to declare them first i'm going to be something like this like let options equal and i have to pass the method that it's going to be a get but uh, if i want to authenticate myself i should pass additional headers those headers or one header actually that I have to pass, it's the only mandatory one for authentication, would be, it's called author authorization. Authorization. And then I would have to pass in the authorization header, I would have to pass something like token, blah, 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 like a huge token. What is a token? We should talk about that as well. A token is just a big number. But let me finish this little thing. Okay, I finished my opts. And then I can here close here and that's my apps. Yeah, that's it. So I, this will get the response response and I have to await for it. That is if you're using promises. If you're not using promises, then it would be something like like fetch the same thing, right? So the same my API movies opts, but instead of waiting for it, I can do dot then and here I would get the response. And I would know if I was authorized or not by asking for if, like I could say here, for example, if the response dot status is equal to 200, that means it was okay, right? But if it's equal to 401, that means that I didn't even add the credentials or the token. If it's 403, it's that I have a bit bad email and password. So you can alert the user. If you want to do something ugly, you can just alert the user here and say, um invalid username or password and that's super weird or let's say let's just say um let's just say you don't have permission i think it's a better message it's more accurate okay so this is option a this is option b but i, I don't want to talk too much about this because i'm going to be confusing you I, I better start with the rest of the explanation so we just established that we need you need to pass a token now from now on when you're doing a fetch request it's not only enough the method you can also spec you need to also specify the headers or one header the authorization header in postman if you're familiar with postman i'm going to open postman and uh, until it opens we're going to continue talking in postman there's a way of passing it as well okay so what is a token so basically a token is a big number that you need to get from the front end for the back from the back end at the beginning. So the first thing that will happen in your in your API interaction before you can start asking for for movies or favorites or anything like that, you need to first ne negotiate your login, your token. You need to get your token. So the same client and the same backend will do an initial negotiation or an initial request that it's going to be to get a token that depends on every API, but it could be something like get actually it's not get it's post because you're going to be generating a new token. You're creating a token. It can be a post to token or it can be a post. Some people do a post to login. I don't like the post to login because it's less explicit. Actually, you are not logging in. Logging in is it's a concept that doesn't exist in HTTP. You don't log in into anything. Logging is something that was invented for the user. So I prefer to talk in terms of HTTP. And what you're really doing is you're creating, so that's why we do a post, you're creating a token. So if you're doing an API, you should be doing an endpoint that is going to be slash token and it's going to generate a token. So what you're going to get back from the server you're going to pass username and password, right? So you're going to have in your body, in your fetch, like like we always say, we have fetch, and you're going to receive the URL. It's going to be slash token. And then you're going to be uh, passing as an option. Let me put the options here. Option. 
you're going to be passing the method, of course, that is going to be a post, in quotes, and you're going to also be passing a body. In this case, because there is a post request, you need to pass a body. And in that body, you should specify a email that can be my email at gmail.com, whatever, and then also a password. A password. And here I have to specify a particular password. And of course, I have to json.stringify. So this negotiation, stringify, or it's not a negotiation really, it's more like creating a token. This token creation, it's going to respond back. When I do this request, it's going to respond ba back a token. So it's going to be sending to the front end a token. And then I have to store that token in the front end. And from that moment on, I'm going to use that token to keep making more requests like the ones we were talking about. Here I can now make more and more requests. So there is a second challenge. So the first challenge for doing a... For doing a... For doing a login, let's say that the first challenges, challenges for login or for authentication. The first challenge will be to create tokens in the backend. Or let's say let's 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 try to see this in in the view of the front end. So creating a token that's the first challenge the second challenge is storing that token because you cannot lose it because if you lose that token from that moment on you become again unauthorized and the third one would be requesting using that token from that moment on okay so how do we resolve the first challenge that is creating a token well if you're using React and Flask, or just Flask, I guess, I have a small API here in Flask. It's just five files. Don't don't ignore the rest of the files because they don't matter. It's just a small API that it's going to have. You see how small it is, right? I just have one endpoint here that it's called slash hello. Uh, let's ch change that and let's make it slash token. And it's only going to be a get request, a uh, post request that I'm going to be allowing. So my API is going to accept a post request to slash token. So I'm going to call this, you can call this how, however you want. So I'm going to be calling it um, create token. And then I know that I have to respond a token, right? So I don't have it yet. We're going to be using something called JWT, extended Flask. It's an amazing plugin for Flask. So the first step that you should do is install it, obviously. So I'm going to do, to install it, I'm going to do in my command line, I'm going to do ppenv run, install flask jwt extended. It's just a library from flask. If you are not familiar with ppenv, don't worry, you can do pip install if you're familiar with it. I prefer to use ppenv. It's like an evolution of pip because it contains pip and also env. There are two different libraries usually or two different functionalities, but it combines them. So I like the, I like it a lot because of that. So ppenv install flask, uh, flask wt extended. And this library is amazing. You should look for the documentation here and go to the basic usage because it's very easy to implement. And I'm going to import from here. I don't need all of these. I think I only need two. Actually, I need three. Yeah, I'm gonna import this three into my project. And I'm gonna also, well, you can see here the imports, but what really matters here is this line here that it's, well, actually these two lines matter because it set up the Flask JWT extended extension. So I need to put these two into my project. I'm gonna do it here. You can see that it's, I create the Flask app and after you create the Flask app, you do this. That's why I'm pasting it right below this because this is my create flask app so this is not related to jwt whatsoever this part and i know that i have to grab the app and apply the jwt manager function to it so i'm just gonna do this and when you install applications or plugins or libraries into your flask apis it's always like that it will always ask you to do some kind of configuration variable 
this super secret thing should be something horrible that a hacker will never guess and it should be hidden so my recommendation is to put it here in the dot env as a backend variable so you can do something like this like flask um, secret no let's say jwt secret that's a good name and it's gonna be a horrible number right hexadecimal so with symbols and all of that and i'm gonna put that here now by doing i think that if you want to import you say um os dot get env that's i i don't remember actually how to get a an environmental variable from this file but i think in the admin i may find here it is this one this is the code is os dot environment get okay so i'm gonna do that i'm gonna put it here it's os and I have I cannot forget to import import OS. It, OS is a library from Python that allows you to interact with the operating system. And in, instead of Flask app, it's gonna be JWT secret. So that's my secret, right? You have to remember that every time that you do something like this, you have to stop the server. Ah, I didn't even start it, so it's okay. Okay. But if I would have started it, I need to restart it. Okay, I have to follow that step and then the login. I'm going to copy and paste this and we are going to talk about it. Well, we already have a, a method, but we're going to do it again, I guess. So it's going to be slash token. It's a post request. Create token. And it's telling you here in the comments, create a route to authenticate your users and return. When they say authenticate your users, they really mean creating a token. Okay, because remember, in HTTP, it's stateless, so you have to create a token, give it to the front end so that the front end can request including that token in the headers from that moment on. So that token will have to be here. It'll have to be always added as an authorization header on every fetch that you do. So how do you create a token? Well, in this case, they're saying that you have to pass a username. I think it's better with email. So I'm gonna do it with email. Password, that's okay. So that's going to be email as well here. But username of password 401, like I was saying, it's going to return 401 if the email or the password is not test test. We can change this log logic later. But for now, I think it's okay. Let's just have test and test as email and password. If this is not true, then it's going to continue to the rest, to the rest of the function. So line 27, 28, and it's going to create an access token based on that email. That access token is what I'm telling you. You know, that horrible hash. It's created by this function, create access token. So that's it. We have our, our endpoint here. So let's test it. Remember I was talking about Postman. So here it is Postman. I'm going to dismiss this. I'm going to start my API. So ppm run start. It's going to start my server. Now I have it here on the top. App is not defined in 9.11. So let's check that. No, it's not in 9.11. Source app. App is not defined. Oh, it's yeah. For In my case, it's not app. It's API. So I got to change that to API. That's it. Okay. Let me refresh. Blueprint object has no attribute config. Right. So I'm, I think I'm missing something. It's not API. Maybe it's API.app. I don't really remember this. Let me pause and... Oh my bad. I was doing it in the wrong place. I was doing it in routes. And it's not supposed to be done in routes. So I'm going to cut this. It's not in routes. In routes is only for your endpoints. Everything I did was okay, but... The only two lines, these two lines have to be done uh, in in app.py that it's here uh, inside the source folder, app.py, and that's where you need to put it. That's where I have app available, not API, app. Okay. And I'm, I'm putting it here. I'm putting it in the line 19 or the 20 and 21 because it's after the app. I could, I can put this one later. It doesn't really matter. As long as it is after the creation of the app, you can put it anywhere you like. So I'm putting it in 20 and 21. So this is going to be app. Yeah. 
I already have OS here, so I need to move these three imports. Actually, not the three of them. Only this one, I think. Yeah. Only this one. Because that's the one I'm going to be using the, the function for. Let me see. No, not even this one. Yeah, no, my bad. I don't have to move anything. Yeah, because these three functions are being used. Create access token is being used here. Uh, this one is not being used yet, but we're going to use it later. And JWT required is not being used yet, but we're, we're going to be using it later. So I think that's enough. Let's see. Let's see if it works. App is not defined. Where is that? In what file? App.py in 11. App.py 11. Oh, yeah. In the routes, it's API, like it was originally. Okay. Let's see. Okay. And now it's saying JWT wrap uh, manager is not required. It's, so we need to do it. I forgot about that one. This one, this import has to be done as well here in the app.py. Because here's where I use it, right? JWT manager is being used in the 22. So that's where I have to import it. You don't have to import it in the routes.py. It's in the app.py. Okay, if I refresh, now it's working. So using Postman, we're going to copy the URL of our API, so this one. And we're going to copy the endpoint that it's called slash token, right? So I'm going to create a new request to here slash token. And let's see what happens. It's to a get request, so it's going to give me a 404. Yeah, it's a 404 because it's supposed to be a post request. So here it is. Now it's telling me. Method not allowed. The method is not allowed for the requested URL. Oh, my bad. I have to put API as well. Okay. Now it's telling me object has no attribute get. So it's saying that request.json doesn't have a get. And I think it's because I forgot to make it body. Raw. The request, my bad. The request, you need to make it body. Raw. And then here you have to put your username and password. So remember that we did it for test test. So email. Oh, you have to change this to JSON, by the way. Uh -huh. Email. It's going to be test. And the password. It's going to be test as well. So we send it. And here it is, our access token. Look. This huge thing is the number that I was talking about. It's this one here. When you request, it will respond back the token, right? So it's this one. We did a request to post token. So here it is. API, we did a post to, to, to API token with the email and the password, with the email and the password, and we got back the access token. So we fixed the first challenge. When I was talking about the challenges, we fixed creating a token. So now that token has to be stored in the front end. Like right now, this doesn't really work. Like this token, it's not being stored anywhere. And I don't have a front end. So we have to do the front end, right? So I'm going to pause because I want to make a login form and I don't want to waste that, your time. Okay, I take it back. I think it's not a waste of time. I'm going to explain you. So front folder, I have a, a source with an API and a front folder. So the API, it's all Flask. It's entirely Python. And the front end, it's all React. It's entirely JS. And I have the folder pages, the folder store, the folder component. So I need to do a new page, right? That it's going to be the login form. So I'm going to just duplicate the home. This one, let's duplicate it. And we can rename it to login. It's the login form. And we're going to have here inside, we're going to have a, a login, right? So login let me delete all of this we don't need any of this html so we're gonna have just one div that inside it's gonna have an input type text and another div that is gonna have an input type password and a button for sending it's gonna say login i guess okay let's see how that looks if we do npm run start, it's going to start the front end, our React front end, 
let's wait for it to compile, there it is, it's compiled, let's refresh or refresh again, at some point it should show up, there it is okay so we're doing a login, right? so we have to look in the layout.jsx that where React Router is so you have to have a, we're using React Router in this project so we're gonna have a browser router that is gonna have a switch with all the routes of our application. So we have slash demo single day ID. So if I duplicate any of these routes, like this one for example, and I put here login, I'm saying that my application now it's gonna have a login, a slash login. So this application that is a front end, it's gonna have now a slash login because I'm creating a new route. I'm gonna create that new route and I have to import the, the component I just made, the page, right? So I'm going to duplicate this line and we're going to put here pages, login, and the same here, login. Let me see if in the login I have a login page. I don't, so I have to change this name to login. Export const login, so that's good. And now that I have my for slash login, I can put here login. I have to make sure that it was properly imported. Here it is, login, and here's the component login. That's good. So now if I put here slash login, it should show the login form. There it is, with my username and password. Let's just put some small placeholders, placeholder, to make sure that we can put here email, and in this one we can put password. The placeholders are great because they they will show what needs to be inputted. It's, it's, it's amazing for the user. It gives more usability. Okay, so there it is, email and password. So now we have to implement uh, a local state. So const email set email is equal to use state. I ha you have to do this because we need to have the email and the password in a variable to be able to send it to the backend. So that is called a control it component. You can Google that or watch any of the other videos and the other video about control it components. So that's like by memory, right? You know that you have to put an on change so that every time that the input changes, you can call the function to set the email with whatever was specified on that input and the same it's gonna happen for the password when every time the password changes we're gonna set password and now that we have the email and the password in sync well we need another step my bad we need to say also value and your value is gonna be in sync with email and your value is going to be in sync with the password so we have now what we call a controller component, so that means that every time that the input changes, it's going to set the email, and every time that the email is set, the variable email is going to be set as the value. So it's a controller component. Okay, now that we have that, we only need to listen for the on click. In the on click, we're going to fetch, so I'm going to call this, let's just call this handle click and we're gonna have a function here const handle click that is going to fetch right so we were talking about the fetch right so fetch it's gonna be to slash login but it has to be to this particular endpoint so don't don't forget about your the, the API URL so it's gonna be to this huge URL slash API slash token that's how we get the token, right? Because now we're replicating Postman. So whatever you put in Postman is what you have to put. In Postman, we put method post URL body raw JSON. So we're doing the URL right now. And in the options, const options, we're going to put the method. And it's going to be post. And we're going to put the body that it's going to have json.stringify because it has to be a text so we cannot send an object to it we have to convert it into a text and we're going to pass the email because that's what's being specified here right we can copy and paste this actually and put it like this boom 
email and password. But it's not test and test, right? It's whatever the variable email is and whatever the variable password is. And then we're going to pass these options here. Oops. Dot then, dot then, dot catch. Please don't forget about the dot catch. That's what the majority of the junior developers do, and it's going to give you some trouble. It's better just to do a console log or console.error here with the error information. There was an error. I want to make sure I see this in my console if it there's any errors. And the first of then is going to have the response. So you're going to have you're going to say if response dot status is equal to 200 we continue in in a good way so rest.json so that we can convert this into a json else alert there has been some error you don't have to you it's bad to be vague vague but i think it's okay to be vague right now we can elaborate more on this later i'm just gonna test it now you know i'm just gonna open my application open the inspector always open the inspector to make sure that there is no errors well there is an error you can see here use state is not defined i forgot to import the use state here so if i refresh now it should work it should not tell me let's see if it compiled yeah it compiled with no errors Okay, I'm going to put an email, so test and a password, so test. Let's click on the network tag, and this is key. Please, I beg you with all my heart, always use the network tag. It's the only way to debug this. You don't want to be in the dark guessing. You want to be an uh, assertive developer that fixes issues quickly and it's not frustrated. And the only way to do that is with the network tab when you're doing interaction between backend and frontend. You have to intercept whatever's happening in the middle and see what's happening. You need to see it. And the only way is using the network tab and waiting here for the request. So when I press this button, it should show up here. Let's say one, two, three. There it is. You see, it said token. So if I click here in the headers, you can see what I did. This was my URL. It should supposed to match Postman exactly. You can also see that I sent a method post. So what was the problem? Let's see the response. No, I don't know what happened, right? But it's red, so that's bad. So another way, that, another thing you can do when when you have no information here is that you can click on. You can go back to the back end and see the command line. Here it is. Look, it says. Known type object has no attribute get. So my guess is that there's no JSON here. Maybe I forgot. You know how in the in Postman you specify here the type of body? Well, in front end, you have to do it by passing a header. Headers that it's called the content type. So content type, it's going to be application. JSON and then don't forget this comma and let me try again maybe if I pass the application JSON it will my backend will think that this is actually a JSON because in my backend here in the routes here's where I decode request that JSON so I'm hoping that it's able to get from the JSON what is the JSON the JSON is what you send to the backend right when you're sending something you're passing a body in the request this body here is a string this body is a string that's what you stringify it it's not an object it's a string that looks like an object so that's what you send to the backend this here this is a string that looks like an object but it's really a string okay let's try again and let's see if now it works i'm going to refresh okay and now i'm going to put test and test and then press login boom Okay, better. You see, there has been some error, and you can see two little, two little requests here in the network tag. The first one's a 200. The second, one's, the second one is a 401. We can click here, and you're gonna see the status code 401. So that means bad username or password. We need to check why, 
I'm passing email test password. Oh, there it is. You see how the network tab is amazing. It shows me the request payload. So what I send, if you scroll all the way, every time you click on this red one, if you scroll all the way down, you're going to be able to see the, to see the payload. And I can see here that the payload is wrong because it's passing test, not test. So I can just fix it here. I put only three characters. So T-E-S-T, -E login. Now it's good. You see how now that this red one is still here, but because it's a history, it's historical. But the new one here, it's getting as a response the token. You see, access token and the entire token. So we just fixed the first issue. The first issue, the first challenge was creating a token. Now storing that token. The problem is that if I refresh, I'm going to lose the token because every time you refresh, the entire application will get loaded from scratch, the entire front end. So here in the login, when I get the response back in this dot ten here, this is data, right? And this data, it's going to match exactly what you see here in this, um, in this response, so it's going to match an object, an object that contains access token and the token. So we have to put that somewhere. And for that, we have a small API that is called the local storage. It's a browser thing. Local storage is a way to store information persistently. So that means, let me do a small example here. If I am in any website, let's say that I'm in GitHub, right? And I do some JavaScript here. Let me open here my JavaScript console. If I do let name equal Alex and I press enter and then I console log that name, it's going to say Alex, right? There it is. Alex. Perfect. But if I refresh, right? And then I do console.log name, it's going to say nothing. Look, it doesn't remember that I had a variable uh, name and that it was Alex. So the only way to fix that is by doing, is by using something that is called a local storage, or you can also use uh, session storage. It doesn't really matter, both will work. And then you do set item, and then you can pass name here, and then the value. So my value is Alex. So I'm saying, hey, look, hey, session storage, please. I want you to save a variable called name with the value Alex. If I do that, and then I refresh, if I refresh, you can see that I can do console.log, local storage, oh my bad, session storage, that's what I was using, dot get, name. Oh, it's get item, my bad, get item, name. See, Alex. So it's super cool because now I can refresh and even if I refresh, I can say, for example, let name equal session storage dot, dot get item name. So basically I'm retrieving from the session storage the name and I can do console.log name and it remembers that it's Alex. So basically this little function here for getting and setting items, it's a way to save information even with refresh. So I'm going to do here local storage or session storage dot set item. And I'm gonna, not going to call it name. I'm going to call it token. And what's the value? Data dot access token. How do I know this? Because it's what came from the packing, an object that contains access token as a property. So I'm doing that object data dot access token. Let's console log it as well so that you can see it. Console.log data and we can put here this came from the backend. Okay. So we're saving it. But one more thing that we have to do is I'm gonna put here a condition now. And I'm gonna say I'm gonna say if session storage dot get item then then I don't need I don't need I'm gonna say you are log it in with and I'm gonna put 
the token. Let me just put this here. I think it's better if we put it in the at the beginning. We're gonna do like this. Const token equal this. It's a little bit more organized. So we have a variable token. So we're saying if token, so if the token exists and the token is different from empty and the token is different from undefined, then you are logged in with this token. If not, we're going to pass the entire login form like this. Took, took. I should put the div inside as well, my bad. Let me put it inside as well. Here it is. Any any issue here? I think there's an issue there, but I don't recognize what it is. Uh, I forgot to close this parenthesis. So here it is. Okay, there you go. So let's see how it works now. So remember that we, in the login here, we set item and we're getting the item at the beginning, get. So what's gonna happen? If I refresh, I'm refreshing right now. Let me also do here, console.log, this is your token. I'm gonna pass the token to the console log. Okay, so let's put here in the, I think I missed a semicolon. Oh no, I didn't, I, I can just, re refresh so here we are in the console you can see that it says let's wait for the console this is your token null that's why the, the login information is is showing up because remember that we have a condition here that says that if the token is null or no if it's not null if it's not empty and if it's not undefined then it's going to say you're logged in with this token. Else, it's going to say the entire login. So here it is, the login. So look how cool this is. I can do now local session storage dot set item. And I'm going to put token. And I'm going to put here blah, 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 blah. And enter. And now I'm going to refresh. And this is going to go. Look. You see? You're logged in with. And if I refresh... It doesn't really get um, it doesn't show the login anymore because I have it in the local storage but I can do I can do session storage dot I think it's destroy or remove remove item I think it is token and it will clean it up let's see if it works I refresh it's supposed to be cleaned it should show the login form now and there it is, the login form. So now let's try with test and test. You know, I press login. This came from the backend, so the access token was saved. So if I check now, if I do a console.log of session storage.getItem and I retrieve token, it should show. There it is, look, my token. I did the console.log and here's the token. So if I refresh, it's not going to show up this again. But maybe you're saying, but yeah, but you shouldn't refresh. Like it should be automatic. Obviously, it should be automatic. So we're missing one more thing. And it's we need to put this into the context in a, as a global variable to share it among the entire application. So we could store the token in a local state here, but it wouldn't make any sense because then we would have no access to the token to the rest of the application. Uh, so the best way would be to put it in the store. So the store is this huge context that we created here in the store, in the flux.js. We have the actions and the actions have access to setting the store like this. So we're gonna copy the login that is this one I'm going to copy all the content so that we can put it here and I'm going to create an action that it's going to be called login. Login like this. I'm going to paste all of this here. So our function now 
it's going to receive an email and a password right let's make it async so that it's easier to manage so we're gonna make this const resp equals to await fetch that way we don't have to do this and we don't have to do this we can just put this here const if it's we're gonna say if it's different than 200 we're going to alert else actually we need no else if if we return right away we will need no else like this churn false and we are gonna have the second const data it's equal to resp.json and we also have to await for that instead of dot then and then we can say this is what came from the back end we do the set item here and then like that yep and then we can do try catch try this all of this is gonna be a try in if there's any error we do catch error and we can say console.log or dot error there has been an error logging in okay and why am I doing this in a async await way well because the amazing thing about async await is that if I return something in an async function that will translate into a dot then here. So I can do now actions dot login dot then. So that means that if I pass here the email and the password and the login was successful, this dot then here will only get called if this return through executes. Okay? So what we're gonna do is that we're gonna we're gonna redirect const use history I think no it's like history with using react router we're gonna do use history here and this is to redirect right we have to import this uh, from from react router I think like this import use history from react router I don't remember about this but if it we, we have any issues I'm just gonna Google it and 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 fix it, and we can say here history. That push, and we can take it. Let's say to the home. Remember that we have these options. In the layout.js, we have either this one or this one or login or single. Actually, we should have one that it's called private. You know, we can just have another private, but whatever. For now, let me just have it like this. Okay. So that's it. Um, Ah oh, well, oh, another thing is that instead of token, it's that's it. No, my bad. It's not it. We should also here do set store, and we should set the token to data data dot access token. So the same token that we're storing into the session storage, we're also storing it into the store. So we should put this here in the store. We should put token like that. So that's it. We have, well, may, 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 let me make a null. I think it's better. So in the store, we have initialized token. In the actions, whenever the the login finishes, after fetching and waiting for the response JSON and making sure that there's a data access token, we're going to set it into the persistent storage, like into the session storage, and we're also going to put it in the store. And when we put it into the store, it's going to automatically re-render the entire login and hopefully it's it's going to yeah let me you know what let me comment this for a second so that you can see without this all we're gonna do is we're just gonna do actions.login and that's it and without the history thing so let's see let me refresh well it says that I'm logged in right now let me see 
Oh my bad, I have to do PPM. No, npm run start again because at some point we had an issue and the application stopped. Let's see if we have any issues. Compiling, compiling, compile with warnings. So it's good. Let me refresh. It's gonna probably say that we already have a token because it's already in the in the in the local storage, but we can clean that in the session storage, my bad. We can clean that token so that we have no let me put here slash login. Okay, perfect. There's nothing in the local storage probably. Let's try with test test. Let me open the inspector. If we open the network tag, we should see the interaction with the backend. One, two, three, boom. There's the interaction. And you see how it refreshed without me having to refresh the website? That's because the the because we put it in the store right here. We did set store. And remember, when you call this function set store, the login view will refresh because it's hooked to the context API. So the context API will re-render the component. And the next time it renders, it would know that there is a token in the session storage. We're doing a get item. We don't really need this because we can just... um. We can put it here like this. We can say store the token, and it will be the same thing. Store the token. Store the token. Okay, now the last part is the redirect that I was showing, right? So let's do that redirect. I'm gonna put the dot then and do the history of the push, right? So what we are going to do is that we're gonna refresh. Actually, we can do it even better, you know. We can say like this, we can say if, if store the token and store the token is different than empty and store the token is different than undefined, we can do history.push and I think it's going to be even better. That way we don't have to do the trick that I was doing with it then. We don't have to convert this function into an asynchronous function or anything like that. So anytime that it finds a token, it will take me out of the login. Yeah, it will redirect me out of the login. So let's try that. Let's refresh. And it's not going to work now that I remember because we're missing one little step. We're missing one step. You'll, you'll see how it doesn't work. Let's wait for it to refresh. Well, it's taking a while. Okay, it finished it refreshing and it says token is not defined. This token is not defined, it's in login in the line 13. So 13 here, this one. This should be store the token now because we're putting it in the store so that it can be shared among the entire application. Okay, it finished it loading and now it says email and password. So it didn't recognize the local storage. Let me show you also here in not in the network tag, but in the next one in the application tab. You can you have access to the local storage and the session storage. So I can see if I click here, I can see that in the session storage I have a token. Look at it. Here it is. And still it's not being recognized here. Why? Because I'm getting it from the store. But when you refresh, nothing is filling the store like the only moment in time that I'm setting the store with a token is after login, right? So who's setting the token after refresh? No one. So I should be doing that. How do I wait for the refresh? The best place in this in this context in this uh, template or boilerplate would be in the app context. Here, it says this function is the equivalent to the window that unload. It would only run once the entire application lifetime. You should. Do your AJAX requests or fetch API requests here. Do not use your state. So basically, I can here say state dot actions dot whatever. So I'm going to do like, let's say, um, uh, sync token from session storage store. And I'm going to call this function. And what is this function going to do? It's an action, right? So I have to fill it in. I have to come here and I can do now fill sync token from local storage and it's the only thing it's going to do is let or const token equal 
session storage dot get item token. So it's going to get the token from the session storage and it's going to put it in the store. Okay. But only if it exists and if it's different than empty and if it's different from undefined, it's going to set the store. So according to my calculations, this sync that now is going to execute at the beginning of the of the application, so when the window doesn't load, like when the application finally finishes loading, it's going to sync whatever's in the local sto session storage in the token variable into the store. So that's the final step. Let's see if with, with that we can finally actually. You know what? Let me do one more thing. Console.log application just loaded. Syncing the local storage, the session, session storage token. Let's see if it works. It says state.actions.sync token from session storage is not a function. So let me see sync token from session storage. It should recognize it. Let's see. Oh my bot, because I said here in the 926, I said that session storage get item token is token and I need to put here token not data.access token because I copy it from here and here is data.access token because we got it from the backend or waiting for the response JSON but in here we are waiting we're not waiting for anything we're just getting it from the session storage so it's token it's equal to token so that's one thing it's gonna take another five minutes to refresh so I don't want to waste your time I'm gonna stop until it fin finishes refreshing Okay, it's finalized, it's finally refreshed. Look at this. I'm gonna try to log in. Log in. Enter. It should redirect me back to the home because I already have a you see here how it's yeah, it took me back to the well this should get this should get deleted, the login thing. And it's trying to get into the login now. So after it loads, it should finally redirect back to the home. There it is. We're back in the home. So it's working. And another thing that we could do if we want is that here in the nav bar, in the nav bar, we could say, let's say this, let's hook the nav bar to the context as well so that we can refresh the nav bar when we're logged in. So we're going to paste this here. We're going to copy the in import as well, like this. And then we can say here, if store.token, then, or if there is no token, we can say that we want to add this that says login, login. Please log in. Uh, or if not, we can say log out, log out. I, I think the please is not needed. So just log in and log out. And this one's not going to take me anywhere, by the way. This uh, log out thing, instead of taking me anywhere, I'm just going to do an on click that when click it, it's going to call uh logout function that we don't have so actions.logout like this and i have to of course create that login function so in the flux.js i'm gonna have similar to i have the sync token from the session store i'm gonna have now logout and what am i gonna do i'm gonna do remove item to delete the token entirely from the local storage and let me put here logging out and in the in the store i'm going to set the token back to null so i'm just basically removing the, the token from the session storage and setting the token to null and it's gonna magically refresh so let's see now after it loads let me pause until it loads oh it's telling me that use context is not defined so i'm guessing that here in the login 
I have to import, yeah, I have to import use context in the in the nav bar. So here. Yeah, I forgot that, my bad. There it is, use context. So it should work now. Let's see, I'm gonna refresh. It's gonna take a while, so let me stop. Okay, here it is. It log it, it it finally showed up. So if I press log out, look what's gonna happen. One, two, three, boom. And the local storage now. If we go to application, in the session storage, we have nothing, you see? So if I try logging in now, I'm gonna do test, test. And if you look here with your eyes at the local storage, boom, there's a token now, you see? And it says logout. If I press logout, the token gets removed from the local storage. I can log in. So the last step will be from now on, every time that I do anything that I do, I will have to append the token. So that's the last, last thing. Remember I was telling you the challenges, creating a token, done. Storing that token, done. Requesting using that token from that moment on, not done yet. So I'm just gonna do one little request now. I'm gonna do one little request using the token. So here I can say, for example, let's say this get messages, get message. It's doing a fetch to the API to hello, but it's not appending the token, right? So we have to do const opt, and then we can do here, here headers, and here we do application, no, my bad, uh, authorization, authority, authorization, and as a value we put bearer, I think it's bearer, but I don't remember. The, whatever's on the documentation. Let, let's check the documentation for a second. Okay, it says authorization bearer access token. Okay, so I was doing good. Bearer space and the access token that is store dot token. But I need to const store equal get store. I need to retrieve the store first here in, in this action. Then store dot get token. That's very good. And now I can pass these options here, comma this. And now I can do a request. But this request, this request in the backend that is not done, it's API hello, so let me, let me do it because I don't have it. I'm going to duplicate this request. I'm going to make it a get to hello. And here, let's say get hello. This is our endpoint, and we're going to return just hello world, right? Let's say just hello. No, it has to be an object, my bad. So let's say JSON uh, message hello world, whatever, right? It's, I'm just returning something. So I'm going to JSONify this. This is better to call it dictionary. This is not really... A JSON. It's a dictionary that is going to be converted into a JSON with, by the JSONify function. So this this endpoint here, if I add this JWT required decorator here, I'm going to make it private. So only people with an appended token into the request will be able to access this. Let me show you. So if I try now to do a, a request, a GET request, so a GET request to hello, it's going to tell me unauthorized, you see, because I have no token, because it has this little decorator here. So I can remove this decorator, and if I remove it and I try again, it's going to allow me, look, message, hello world, so now it, it allows me, it's at 200, okay. If I put it back, it's going to become, again, private, so no one will be able to request this unless there is an authorization token in the request, in the headers. So headers, I will have to put here authorization, and I have to put bearer and some token, right? This is not the right token, right? It's, it's not done, so it's going to give me not enough segments and a 422. It's, it means that it doesn't even know how to decode this token. But if I copy a token that exists, so let me grab that, that exists. I'm going to log in. I'm going to copy it from here. I'm going to copy this token from here. And I paste it here in the bearer. 
and I try, now it allows me, you see that 200, because I'm passing the authorization bearer with the token. We can do the same from the front end. We can come here to the actions in the flux.js and we can paste here that token, but we're not gonna paste it manually like this. It doesn't make any sense, right? We're gonna grab it from the store. And you're gonna see how if we do get message, let me put a button here in the home that says get message. I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna say that when use effect, so when this view it's loaded, I'm gonna do actions dot get message and I'm gonna remove it from here. Yep. And then so get message is gonna occur after this use effect. So after the this view is it's um finally loaded and I'm gonna print here store dot message. And let's see what happens in the flux.js. Yes, okay, this is what's happening. I'm getting the data, and then data.message is gonna be put into the store, right? In the get message function, we're saying get the store, get the token, append it as a header, fetch to the backend, to the API hello, with these options that we established here. And then if the JSON, if the response.json is successful, set the store with a message property that has a data.message. And that data.message is this message here. This is like the equivalent of data. It's what comes from the backend. Okay, and let's check the network, the network request now. One, two, three, boom. Network. Here's network. We should see something fetching message. Come on, message, show up here. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Okay, my bad, I forgot also to import the use effect in the home. So I'm gonna put here use effect. That's my bad, that's why it was not loading. Okay, it finally loaded. If I go to the network, you'll see that the hello was, it tried to do a hello, but it gave a 404. And I'm guessing it's because the, I forgot about the URL, I put the wrong one. I'm gonna copy this URL and instead of having um, backend URL like this as a variable, I'm just gonna put it the entire URL here in the fetch and hopefully it's gonna be now to the Amethyst Impala. That's my URL because before it was being done to the wrong one. Let's see, this is a hello to the gold Caribara, so this is not the one. I'm gonna refresh again. And hopefully the network is going to show me the right request. You see how important the network is? Please, please use the network all the time. So now it's doing it again. Look, but now it says 422. So that means not enough segments. So let me check in the headers. What if I send the authorization header or not? Authorization. I said bearer null. Look, it's wrong. It should be the entire token and it's not so let me see why application token here's the token oh you know what it could be that maybe this is being executed after after the other thing yeah maybe this endpoint because this is asynchronous right so maybe this endpoint in the 31 it's being executed after this other one that it's happening in home after this one it should be the other way, right? So how can we fix that? Okay, I know how. I think the use effect is super cool because it allows you to have like dependency dependency variables. So I know that the store the token needs to be different than null for this use effect to execute. So I can say here, every time the store the token changes, call this use effect entirely. But if the store the token store the token and store the token is different than empty and store the token is different than undefined then do they get message so let's see so all I did was calling the use effect more than once 
every time the store token changes so it's going to be called first with null and then with with the actual variable but i am only going to get the message when it's not null so and there it is look at the hello world that's good but also in the network you can see that here's the the two hellos and i got it it says message hello and it says authorization in the in the request headers it says authorization headers here it says authorization bearer and the entire token so that's good i was able to do a request a private request and from this moment on you know that every time that you fetch from here from flux you have to get the store create ops append it to the header and then do a request to whatever endpoint you want and request whatever information you need from your api so going back to these challenges that we had, we had creating a token, done. Storing that token in the store, done. Requesting using that token from that moment on, done. From that, from this moment on, remember to append the token. Going back to the previous the slide, remember that you have a client, a backend, and every time you request, you have to pass the token on every request, unless you're doing the login, and the login is different because it's where you fetch to token and here you have to pass the email and password. And obviously login, the login endpoint here, the slash token endpoint, it doesn't need a JWT required. So don't do like this. Don't put this in here because the login is supposed to be public endpoint. Anyone without a token should be able to call it to be able to get a token. That's it. So there's actually one last step that I wanted to show and I forgot, so I am adding this last part of the video, that it's, you can know who is requesting your, your uh, the information. That they say that I have in my front end, I'm doing this request, right? That it's going to ask for API hello. So if I wanna know who's requesting on the backend, I can do, like this. I can use this last function that it's called get JWT identity. So I can say here email it's equal to get, get JWT identity. So we can say hello world and then plus email. And look how cool this is because if I refresh now you'll see that it's gonna tell me hello and it's gonna give you my email as well. Hopefully, right? Or you can see it's a 401 already. Why token has expired. Yeah, so I guess I have to log out and log in again. I can put test, test, login. And it says now, hello world test. You see, so it knows that my email is test. What is it now? How does it know that? Well, it's like magic, basically. When you have this function get JWT identity, it's gonna match. You can see that it's matching with this. So when you created the token here in the other endpoint, remember that this is the endpoint that, that we used to create the token. This one, create token. In this endpoint, whatever you grab, so whatever you grab to create and whatever you use to create the identity here, when you call the function create access token, that's what you get when you say get JWT identity. So that's amazing because from that moment on, I'm, I know who's calling the endpoint because I can get it from the token magically. There's, it's actually not magic, but it's how JWT works because JWT, when you do an, uh, an endpoint with JWT uh, or when you implement tokens with the JWT, the token is divided in three, in three parts. Here it is. The header, the payload, and the verify signature. So, so this endpoint, uh, my bad, this token that we were storing in the session storage, in the application, this one, you see how the, end, the token has a little dot here. And if you continue to the right, you're gonna find another dot somewhere, here it is. So that means that there's three pieces in this token. So the first piece is the header, the second is the payload, and the second one is the verify signature. So in this payload, you can store in the payload, you can store things like ID, username, email, and 
how do you do that in this library? By passing it as an identity. So basically, we're able to store information in the token, and in this case, we're storing the email. So every time that we have the JWT require the creator in a function that is going to handle a, a request from an endpoint, we can get that email or that information, in this case, the email, from by using this get JWT identity function. That, so that's amazing because that's actually authentication. So we know not only that you are who you are, that you're, that you're logged in, but we also know your email. So, for example, if we wanted to get all the payments that this guy has done or this person has done in the last year, we could because we have the email. So we can now retrieve from the database all the payments that this person has done. And just to finish, I wanted to show this diagram that contains like a summarized version of what we just did. Look, everything starts from the user, right? So we do a post to token. So we pass the information that we want for uh, to generate the token. So the username and password or the email and password to the API. The API will validate against the database. And if there's a user and a password that matches, it will create a new token and it will generate the token for us. It will send it to the user or to the client. The client will from now on do requests with authorization headers and the API will validate that and it will return. So, and it goes and it goes like that from that moment on. So thank you very much.